All right, let's talk about something that trips up almost everyone when they're firing up a new Proxmox server for the first time, storage. We're gonna cut through all the confusion and build a super clear, practical guide to get your drive set up perfectly, right from the get-go. Oh man, I think we've all felt this. You've got all this awesome hardware ready to go. Your speedy NVMe drive, a nice big SSD, maybe a couple of beefy hard drives, and then the Proxmox installer just stops and asks you to make this decision that feels so permanent, so critical. Well, this explainer is here to make that doubt disappear for good. So here's our game plan. We're gonna tackle this step by step. First, we'll figure out the absolute best place for your operating system. Then we'll find the perfect home for your VMs and containers. After that, we dive into the big drives, RAID, backups, all that good stuff. Then comes the big one, the file system decision. And finally, we'll wrap it all up into one perfect, easy to follow blueprint. Okay, first things first. The most important choice you'll make right at the start, where does Proxmox itself actually live? This is all about speed and size, but you know, there's a little gotcha in here that we absolutely have to talk about. Let's just make this dead simple. The golden rule here, put the Proxmox OS on your fastest, but also your smallest drive. In a lot of modern builds, that's probably gonna be something like a 256 gig NVMe. This makes your whole system feel snappy. Fast boots, a quick web interface, it's exactly what you want. So you might be thinking, hey, why not my big one terabyte SSD? It's fast too. Well, the thing is Proxmox itself doesn't need a Ferrari sized disc as the source material so perfectly puts it. Using that huge fast drive for just the OS is kind of a waste of prime real estate that your virtual machines are desperately gonna want. Okay. So you've put the OS on your nice little NVMe, but here's that surprising catch I mentioned. There's this rumor, this fear that circulates in the community that Proxmox by default writes a ton of logs, so many that it could wear out your brand new SSD way faster than it should. So is that actually true? And yeah, the short answer is it kind of can be a problem. Out of the box, Proxmox is set up for high availability clusters and can be a little chatty. But don't panic. There is an incredibly easy fix to turn off what the source calls the log fire hose and give your drive a nice long life. And this is it. It's literally just these two simple commands. Since you're probably running a single server, you don't need these high availability services. You run these two lines and poof, the constant unnecessary disk writing just stops your SSD will thank you. Awesome. With the OS drive sorted and safe, let's move on to the real star of the show, that bigger one terabyte SSD. This is the Goldilocks zone. This is where all your actual work is gonna happen. Yep, this drive is your workhorse. It's the absolute perfect home for all your active VMs in your containers, anything that needs that low latency and fast disk access. We're talking databases, game servers, development environments, anything where performance really matters. This is its job. Now, to actually use it, you're going to set it up as a storage pool inside Proxmox. And that sounds complicated, but it's not. It's really just a dedicated folder where Proxmox knows to store all your virtual machine disk images. You just create a directory on that SSD and tell Proxmox, hey, put my stuff here. Okay, we've taken care of all the fast, flashy SSDs. But what about those two big spinning hard drives you have sitting there? They are perfect for bulk storage, backups, and media, but they give us a really important choice to make between safety and just raw capacity. So you've got two main paths you can go down. Option A is RAID 1, which is mirroring. It's the super safe option. Everything you write gets copied to both drives. If one dies, no big deal. You have a perfect clone. The only catch, you only get the storage space of one drive. Then there's option B, just use them as two separate disks. You get all the storage, but there's no safety net. If a drive fails, whatever was on it is gone, period. So what's the verdict? Well, for most home lab or small server setups, the recommendation is crystal clear. Just go with RAID 1. Trust me, giving up a little capacity in exchange for that data redundancy, that is a trade-off that will save you from having a very, very bad day. All right, we're on the home stretch, but we've hit our last major technical decision, the file system. When you're installing Proxmox, it's gonna ask you to choose one. And this isn't just a random choice. It actually has a pretty big impact on your server's features and performance. So let's break it down. You've got ZFS, which is amazing. It's all about data integrity. It's got killer features like instant snapshots, but it's hungry for RAM. It needs a good bit of memory to run well. 
Then you have ext4, which the source calls boring but reliable. And that's a good thing. It's lightweight, it's stable, perfect for an OS drive. And finally, there's XFS, which is really good with huge files, but you just don't see it as often in the Proxmox world. So let's cut right through all that complexity. Here's the simple, effective answer. For your Proxmox OS on that speedy NVMe drive, just use ext4. It is lean, it is fast, it is rock solid stable. It's the perfect, no headache choice for that job. Okay, we've made all the individual choices. We've talked about the why behind each one. Now let's pull it all together into a single cohesive plan, your final storage blueprint. This is a takeaway you can use to set up your server right now. So here it is, the complete picture. Your 256 gig NVMe is for the Proxmox OS, formatted with ext4 and you've disabled those chatty services. Your one terabyte SSD is the workhorse for all your VMs and containers. And finally, your two two terabyte hard drives are set up in a safe RAID 1 mirror, probably using ZFS to manage them for its awesome data integrity, and they handle all your backups and bulk data. And there you have it. This blueprint creates a perfectly balanced system. You've got blazing speed right where you need it for the OS and your apps, you've got critical redundancy for the data you can't afford to lose, and you've built a solid, smart foundation that's going to serve you well for a long, long time. You've nailed it right from the start. And just like that, the setup anxiety is gone. Your storage foundation is solid, it's secure, it's performant. So the only question left to ask is the really fun one. What are you going to build on it first? 